Hey, welcome to my channel. I've been drawing a lot on my iPad and the thing with Procreate is that it can make you think that you're a much better artist than what you are in real life. So I decided to buy a notebook and put my drawing skills to the test. So for today's piece, I'm going to be using the Himmy Gouache paint set with 24 colors. It was priced at $29.99 on Amazon and it had a 10% off coupon, so don't ask me to math right now, but that's how much I paid for it. It comes with this nifty little plastic palette for you to mix your paints in. I thought it was really cute and I like how it fits right on the lid. The gouache set also comes with brushes. This was a really well thought out product. I think it's a really good all in one product. For $29.99, that's not bad. So it comes with three brushes, this pointed brush. Pointed brushes are normally my favorite because for some reason I draw small. I don't know why. It's how my wrist works. It also comes with this square brush that I do use for the swatches. And then there's also a round brush in there that I literally don't use throughout the piece and I forgot to do a close-up of. That's how much I like it. <laughs> so the paint color name is on the lid that you are going to forcibly rip off and then throw out. Nowhere else on the container is the name. So I did write down all the names in the order that it currently is on a page that I'm going to use for swatching. It's time to get into opening these up individually. This was actually kind of fun, but at first it didn't feel that fun because I was afraid of making a huge mess, but opening wasn't that hard and these didn't make a mess. They didn't splatter out. Very minimal on the lid. I was going to scrape each of them off, but this just makes it messier. So I normally don't like to waste anything, but no, I just threw out the lids like that. Storage was a bit of a concern for me with these. I did plan out space so that I could lay it flat. That way it's not on its side because I am afraid of it spilling all over the place. I read the Amazon website and it does say that they performed 200 drop tests to make sure the box is leak proof. But what about the paints themselves? I mean, if I dropped it 200 times, I'm sure the paint would be all over the place mixed in with all the other paints. So the website doesn't say anything about that. And if I had money to throw away, I would actually try to perform this drop test and see what happens to the paints. But I bought these paints for a very specific reason. I have a watercolor paint set that I use and that I love a lot, but the colors are very light and I wanted something that was a bit more pigmented. I know that I could buy individual like little paint tubes of watercolor and that those colors are a bit richer. I'm, I'm still a beginner at art, so. I wanted 24 colors, I'm not gonna buy 24 tubes, and this was the next best thing, and it wasn't that expensive, and I've seen reviews, so that is my reasoning. So some of these colors obviously have some sort of liquid that is separating from them. I would personally recommend taking a popsicle stick or a palette knife or whatever that you have, the back of a brush, and just mixing the liquid that has separated with the paint all the way down the container. These can be reactivated with water if it does dry out. However, I did see a review on Amazon that said something about mildew and having to use a mildew spray. I looked all over Amazon and I couldn't find this mildew spray. I've seen reviews of people just mixing in water. I'm not sure how long it'll take for mildew to set in, but I don't know if I would recommend putting water on these just to prevent mildew. So here is my swatch page, my little swatch page. I'm going to be using this square flat brush that the Himmy set came with in order to swatch. We have medium yellow. For the swatches, what I did was I took a bit of the paint from the container, I put it on the paint palette, and at the beginning, I would just dip my brush into the water, mix it into the gouache paint a little bit, and then see what that swatch looked like. What I learned by the end of swatching and honestly by the end of my piece is that if you want a nice flat sheer color with this gouache paint and water, you need a lot of water and a little bit of gouache. This one is yellow green. Pale green. Grass green. Jade green. 
pale purple. Here I use a little bit more water for the pale purple just to see how well I can shear it out. And on this one you can see the streaking issue. You need a lot more water. Sky blue. Acid blue. Purple, which looks more like pink. <laughs> I even was uh, kind of shocked at it, like this is purple. I thought that maybe I picked up the wrong color, but no, this is purple. <laughs> Ponceau, I looked up the pronunciation. It's Ponceau. <laughs> Deep red. Ochre is one of my favorites. I love this kind of red. I call it a chocolatey red. I have a nail polish like this and I absolutely love it. Rose. Violet. Cobalt blue, so more blues. Prussian blue, this color is just sexy to me. I love me a good navy. Lemon yellow. Nude, which another color that I love. I think this is a perfect base for skin tones. I'm skipping the white for now and going right into earth yellow. Ah, earth yellow. Mm, such a good color. I really like this color. I don't know what it is about it, but I love this color. Orange. Burnt Umber, which again, another color that I like. And I also tried out using a little bit more water when it came to the lighter swatch. I wanted to see what this color in particular looked really sheared out. Ultramarine, which looks a little bit like cobalt blue. It just looks a bit darker. I think I could have done without ultramarine. Black which was very black. I liked how black that was. And again, I think I tried sharing this one out a bit more than I have the other ones or the earlier ones. After cleaning my brush thoroughly, this is white. <laughs> I really wanted to see how well that white covered these um, lines that I drew here, but I also wanted to do other tests with the lines. So I drew some more lines. Now my Micron pen is really dried out. I really needed a new one for this entire thing. I do have new ones now. So that is why the lines look scratchy and they're not that perfect because I knew that that pen just, it was on its last legs. <laughs> so here's what the white looks like. It doesn't quite cover it like white out, but I'm pretty sure if you layer enough on top, you can probably erase the Micron pen. So I took some of that earth yellow color with no water on the brush just to see how it goes on top of the Micron pen. How thin of a layer does it need to be in order for me to still see the lines? I wasn't trying to cover up the lines, I was just seeing how it behaved on top of the lines. And then in this other part I used water. Again, I just wanted to see how the Micron pen looks underneath the watered down gouache paint. Also, I wanted to see what smearing looked like, if it did mix in with the Micron pen. Micron is really good, it's archival ink, so it's not going to smear around the way maybe other pens would. So I wasn't really too worried about that, but you know, wanted to, to see. You never know, sometimes. Now I'm gonna do some blend tests and I just went into the palette. They are already dry on the palette, but as you can see, water does reactivate them really well. It's still a really pigmented color. Color that I'm using to try to blend is acid blue and I do believe it's grass green that I went into. Or was it pale green? No, that looks like grass green. <laughs> so I tried blending them both together. Listen, I'm not a professional, okay? I was just trying to see if I can blend them in how I would blend them in, what technique would I use to try to blend them in, and if they blend it in well. Could, could I do it? If I can do it, then it, it blends really well. I also wanted to see if nude mixed into earth yellow really well, kind of to see if I could get a nice gradient because I do like those two colors. I by mistake mixed in a little bit of green into nude and it turned a little bit grayer, this kind of grayish color. Needless to say, earth yellow pretty much overtook the nude and it did blend in really well, but yeah, it pretty much looks like earth yellow. 
So here is the swatch page. They're all pretty much dry and uh, I think at first when I saw this I was like this has a school paint consistency. It's really um, streaky and I don't know. I wasn't too confident going into it but by the end of the piece I think I, I understand the product. I also wanted to show you the plastic palette container and that it did stain. I tried washing it the best that I could but it did still stain and because of that I'm going to be using a ceramic palette. You have less of a chance of staining the ceramic palette than you do a plastic palette and those little stains are a bit distracting to me and I'm learning how to mix my own custom colors and those stains are just not it for that so ceramic palette for the win. Now in the time that it took me to do all of the swatches um, and everything that I was doing some of the colors started kind of caking up at the top. The green in particular needed a little bit more mixing so I do recommend just going all the way in and mixing to the bottom. So here is the sketching process. I sketched this piece on Procreate on my iPad. I was so happy with the results that I transferred it over to my notebook because I loved it so much. There are advantages in Procreate, like you can make perfect circles and you can also use a stabilizer with your brush so you can have uh, smoother strokes. And like I said, on Procreate, you can just make things look so good. It doesn't always translate when I draw it on paper though, which is why I prefer Procreate. She had little piggy wiggies on her pajamas Oh, this is a sketch of my niece, by the way. She had paint on her hands and she was looking up at her mom with paint on her hands. She didn't really quite look this sad, but she was looking at her mom like, Mom, can you please wash my hands? And I just decided to make it more of a pouty face. So this is what it looks like on my iPad. And I loved it so much that I transferred it over to my sketch pad. My quote unquote sketch pad is this Canson watercolor notebook. It has 37 by 10 inch sheets and I intend to fill this notebook up with drawings and, and just fun stuff. It is textured paper and the first page is of course left blank because I was terrified of it. I don't know. I was just terrified. So here it is. Here is the sketch. Like I said, the lines aren't as crisp as they are on Procreate, but I did need a new Micron pen. Okay, can we keep that in mind? So I did add some toys in the background, this little wooden truck and a little piggly wiggly because I didn't want to draw individual piggies on her pajamas the way I did on Procreate. So I just drew a little piggy wiggy uh, teddy bear and here we go. It's time to start painting. These are the colors that I mixed up. I wanted it to be quite earth toned, but I wanted her like pink pajamas and the, and the peach piggy to kind of stand out. This is the skin color that I created. It's a bit too yellow but it's fine I guess I, I, sh I wanted it to be a little bit more brown but this is this is the color that I made now like I said at first I was still learning about the product I wasn't using enough water to get a flat color and I really really struggled with that with her skin and also with her hair and the floor. I feel like I get the hang of it mostly with the wooden truck because I knew that I wanted that to be a really light pale color. So with the truck is really when I learned to shear it out a bit more. But I was struggling at first to get a nice flat color. So as I mentioned before, this was inspired by my niece, a picture of her that my brother sent me of her with paint all over her hands and it kind of reminded me of my son and ugh, a little slip up there, but it kind of reminded me of my son. My oldest son put marker all over my youngest son trying to turn him into the Hulk. It's the cutest picture ever. I love when kids make like a mess with art supplies. Personally, I am not messy with my art supplies. I I don't want to be, but I like when the kids are messy. It just, it just shows how fun art is. So again with the hair, I really struggled getting a flat color. This wasn't easy getting a flat color and it turned out to be darker than what I wanted it to. I wanted things to look more like a wash of color, which I know sounds weird considering that I went to gouache to get more of 
a pigmented paint. I think I was used to how sheer you can get watercolor and how beautiful that looks on white paper. So I kind of wanted that and I didn't get that. Instead, it was like a streaky mess. I am still gonna give it a chance. I learned how to use watercolor, not the best, but I learned. This peachy color, I think I used rose and earth yellow in order to get it. I used earth yellow quite a lot in this piece and I think you can tell it is just one of my favorites. Uh, so at this point is when I went in to the floors and at first the color looked like it was good. It was laying really flat and I was really happy with it. But as my brush dried out and the color started shearing out and I was kind of layering on top, the brown just became muddier and it became darker. It was a mess at first. I really didn't like how I lost all of the details on the floor. I mean, I didn't put a lot of details on the floor. I was, you can see a little swirl back there where I was gonna put a wood grain texture, but I decided not to because of the Micron pen. It was just skipping. It wasn't grabbing onto the paper very well. I did get plastic nib uh, Micron pens to see if that helps with like the skipping and trying to get a precise line. It happened on her face where the pen kind of skipped a little bit. So she has a little mark on her face, but that's okay. It's okay, right? Happy accidents. I tried adding that dark brown also for shading around her hair to see if that would make any kind of a difference because right now I lost the detail in the hair. I also sheared out that brown color and I used it as a shadow for her hair and for her ear back there since her hair is tucked behind her ear in a way. I added a little bit of orange onto that pink color from her dress and came out with this really cute kind of salmon peach color. I really like it for a little piggly wiggly because he was on her pajamas. The pigs were just a little bit more orangier or darker than her dress so I, I wanted to have that representation in the drawing. And here is where the sheer color just really worked out fabulously. I believe this is her skin tone really, really sheared out and you can just see it looks great, it looks flat. It was the color that I wanted. It could have just been because it's really small. I don't know. I also used that color on the blocks. I wanted the blocks to be a little bit colorful but still pastel. So I went in with a pale blue, a pale purple, and a pale green. For the shadow under her dress, I wanted it to be a dark purple almost, but I didn't want the line details to get lost with a really dark purple. So in hindsight, I didn't really like the color and I don't think it represented a shadow very well. Around her hands it did, but I don't think around the bottom of her dress it did. So didn't really like that color. Do like the color. It's like a lavender gray color, but I also used that color on the piggy to give him some blush. I decided to go for a pale yellow as the wall. And I didn't give her much of a shadow, mostly because the wood on the floor was so dark, but I do go over that. So on the floor, I was gonna go in with a dark color in order to give her shadow, but I learned that if you go over this area with a wet brush, it starts picking up the gouache paint. So what I did was I went in with a wet brush and kind of went over the area to reactivate the paint, and then I would wipe the paint off on a piece of paper towel that I had. So I was trying to lighten up the floor essentially, and it gave her a natural shadow. It also gave the toys a natural shadow, it's very streaky, it's very patchy, but I think it looks good. It gives the wood a little bit more texture that I wasn't able to do with the Micron pen. I also went in with that technique on the hair. I was originally just trying to make it as even as possible so there's no streaking or kind of like those dark patches. And what I also did at this point was I gave her highlight. Instead of adding more color on top of it, I know that gouache layers very well so that's why I didn't really mind going in with a dark color. I was gonna go in with a light color but what I did instead was I used this technique to give her a bit of, um, a bit of highlights. 
It makes her hair look a little bit plasticky, but it looks really cute because it's really nicely blended. I also went in with a little bit more blushy around her nose and her cheek and a little bit on her ears. And yeah, I was just trying to make everything look as blended as her hair now and as the floor. So I'm just going over everything with a little bit of water. I went in with the palest of grays for her bunny slippers and I tried adding a little bit of shadow onto the Piggly Wiggly but it was not successful because it started picking up that peach color. Again, trying my hardest to give her a little bit of a shadow but I ended up blending those shadows into the wood just because I thought it kind of looked a little bit unnatural with how patchy things are. I decided to go over it with my super dry micron pen because I feel like I lost so much of the details with that gouache paint kind of over it and dulling the micron pen so I went over it. So the micron pen would catch on the paper. I'm really hoping that the plastic nib helps that because it makes my line work, which is already shaky, look even more shaky. I think for this piece it looks fine because everything is kind of patchy, it's not really a flat color, so I don't mind the imperfections. Plus, it's the first drawing that I've done on paper in a really long time outside of my iPad, so I'm still really happy with it. There are things that I could fix, but hopefully I can fix those later as I continue to learn. And then I added the green paint around her hands. That little detail I think is so cute. And there is the completed piece. I did add a few more details off camera with the plastic nib micron. I do think it makes a world of a difference. Here are the paints after using them. Barely scratch the surface. They're still really full. I mean, obviously, it's a very tiny painting. But there she is. I love it. It looks really childlike. I do like the cartoon element. I don't mind the shaky lines too much. The next piece is going to be a little bit more detailed, so I need the pen to perform. But for this piece, it was fine. So if you guys like this video, don't forget to do the YouTube Holy Trinity and the name of the like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my other stuff. I do mainly Sims content, but I am diving into the world of art. So if you guys liked it, do all three. Do none. I hardly care and thank you for watching.